my grandfather used to put a clothespin on my nose. There's oh, a chapter a... in the book called Lessons from a Clothespin. Because wait, stop. A clothespin on your nose. Yeah, it's it's not it was only until I was an adult that I realized that this is something that happens um quite often. And if your nose is too broad, mm-hmm. you can position yourself. Yeah, for certain things. too close spin. <laughs> yeah, it would have to get to. But I tell you, the damage that it did was more than that immediate discomfort. I know I learned that my nose was too big. Mm-hmm. So um I was ugly. I was darker than he was. I I also carried more weight than than the other children, and so I was fat and ugly. Yeah. And those were the messages um, that I learned, and those were the things that I heard growing up as a young girl. Hey everyone, I'm Dania Beckford. Bold, sometimes brash. And since I'm the CEO of Broadtail Design, I consider myself Broadtail Beautiful. It's time we make the conversations we have as women open, honest, and authentic as we navigate living our best lives. Join me as I have intimate conversations with women of all sizes, shapes, and confidence levels as we explore being Broadtail. Hi, my Broadtails. Welcome to another episode of Being Broadtail. Get ready for another thrilling conversation with a woman with many talents. She's an author, CEO of her own production company, a communication specialist and talk show host and mother of two. Let's just say she's your everyday communications shero. You know how we do. We start the weekend off with authentic conversations and strong spirits. So let's welcome my guest for this week, Stacey Ann Smith. Hi, Stacy. Hey, girl. You know long we forever talk? Let me tell you, this is long overdue. <laughs> and this is why we got to bring Mr. Johnny into it. Most because definitely. as much as we're going to talk, we're going to keep it working as well. Progress we're saying now. Oh, you mean? <laughs> of course. Thank you, my darling. Out. Cheers. Indeed. Thank you. <laughs> Always so smooth. We see you on social media and you've been in media for a while always looking fabulous the best pictures the artist set of clothes and then you released this book about the girl from marvel and we're like wait what Mm -hmm. what happened here so start from the very beginning so um in the book time does not heal i share about um my life growing up and the book is really about those experiences um that would have shaped uh, my life in different ways um, that caused me pain and heartbreak and how I was able to overcome by being deliberate about my healing. Right. So in terms of my childhood, I had to come back from um, a lot of negativity, um, toxicity, if you will, starting out in my home. Right. You know, I grew up with my grandparents, you know, big family yard, you know, when you grow up. And um, I talk about my grandfather a lot because there were negative messages and negative things um, that were sewn into me as a child that I carried with me growing up and those things that would have um, predisposed me I say to um, poor decision making so when you talk about um, negative um, speech so my grandfather used to put a clothespin on my nose there's a chapter in the book called lessons from a clothespin because wait stop a clothespin on your nose yeah it's it's not it was only until i was an adult that i realized that this is something that happens um quite often in order to get it straight to make it straight so my grandfather was one of those persons i mean he was born in 1921 so he would have grown up in in an era where straight nose and brown skin and pretty hair Mm -hmm. was a thing right and so in order to ensure that the people around him his children his grandchildren um had what they needed to um, be successful in life because me you know said there was a time when unless you were very brown Mm -hmm. you couldn't get certain work right right? and if your nose is too broad Mm -hmm. you can position yourself yeah more than too close spin (laughs) Yeah, it would have to get to. But I tell you, 
the damage that it did was more than that immediate discomfort. Right. It was not physical. It was no. clearly emotional. So I learned a lot from that clothes pain. I know I learned that my nose was too big. Mm -hmm. So um, I was ugly. Because when you think about your face, mm. your nose is a prominent feature. Right, it's in the center. Exactly. Um, I was darker than he was. I, I also carried more weight than, than the other children. And so I was fat and ugly. Yeah. And those were the messages um, that I learned. And those were the things that I heard growing up as a young girl. Right. And, and let's move into high school because I know that high school can be a very hard time for, for us when we're growing up, trying to shape who we are, what we become. How did those messages from the clothespin filter into what happened during puberty? Well, funny thing, you know, for me, high school was a little better where that was concerned than primary school. So um, I, I write in the book, about just being teased and tormented in primary school. I mean, I would go home and cry many days. Um, but what I used as escape was reading. So I read everything. I was um, I was using literature as as that escape somewhere right. that I could hide and be a different person. I, you know, I've heard this story so much times, uh, so many times of using reading to take you to another mm -hmm. world. It's mm -hmm. like you could enter wherever you want with a book. By the way, let me just tell you, the name of your book, Catch Me After. And I'm like, yeah, man, time not really heal at all. And primary school, Pitney, they can really be active. Yeah. Remember one girl in our primary school, because my, my foot is spotted bad enough, Stacey. Like when people now tell me that, oh my God, I love your skin. I don't know what to say because I'm mm -hmm. thinking, you should have seen what my skin did look like before. <laughs> and one day, even though I was just going around being myself, never really care about it. One girl said to me, I'm a foot fever, raisin bread. Oh no. And me go home and me go to my mother and me say, mommy, this girl said my foot fever, raisin bread. And my mother taught me how to laugh at myself. Mm -hmm. And she began to laugh. And I'm like, mommy, like, why are you pretending not to be on my side? And she was just like, and I said, I'm going to depend on your side, but um, how she come up with that? You know what I mean? Because it was cool. spot on. No Mom, puns intended. Ma Mama would have said you have to take kin teeth, keep a heart Yeah, man, you have to keep a heart mm -hmm. But you were telling me about um, getting into high school So now. when I got into high school, I went to um, the prestigious Immaculate Conception High School. Okay. And <laughs> it was, for me, a great experience. I mean, it wasn't perfect, mm -hmm. but it was at that point that I began to see myself differently. I really did get far more acceptance okay. in high school than I did before. Of course, you know, you had the little cliques and whatever, but I formed some really, really strong friendships. Um, girls who are still my friends right. even now, you know? So high school was good for me, but at the same time, you're struggling with those um, notions about yourself and, you know, trying at that point, as you know, to find who you are. Right. And having been fed that steady diet of negativity, you do come into the world not recognizing your value and your worth. Right. And so that was where I, um, that was my launching point for going into young adulthood and moving into to dating and, you know, making the kinds of choices that ended up causing me even more heartbreak. You are not only a broad tail, you're also tall. Mm -hmm. And so when you walk into a room, you command everybody's presence because of what you look like. How did you deal with that? Because clearly you are taller than most people when you're in high school. Oh yes, so I have been 5'11 since I was 14 years old. Wow. <laughs> I, I'm 5'4. <five> <laughs> <laughs> I, I was 5'11 um, when when I was in fourth form and I've I've, um, come to, to, to love, absolutely love my height. There was a time where, you know, I, I used to, you know, do this and try to small up myself, but it was high school where I learned how to, you know, adopt the right kind of posture. And the good thing now is that when I walk into a room, I do command attention. I always did, but at one point I didn't see it that way. Okay. So it was a matter of perception and and just acknowledging the kind of, of presence that I had. So for me you now, when I do walk into a room, um, people look at me. Yes. 
If I wear heels, I am six one, six two. Yeah, sometimes. kill them all and done. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> so I mean, it, it's just accepting um, that I am regal, and that's a word that people use to describe. People say, "Oh, you just walk into this place like you own it." The yes. truth is, I do. Of course, you do. Yeah, and that is I own it with you, <laughs> girl. <laughs> That is what I have come to accept. You know, it's about mindset. It's about how you see yourself and your place in the world. I mean, right. every place, every space that we occupy, you own it. And you decide if you own it or not. Right. And once you do that, everything else will line up because you have claimed that space. Right. But you were never always like that. Mm -hmm. What was it like? pre this coming into your confidence girl when me walk in at the room and the people look at me and say lord jesus i want to have something on my teeth i want to have something stick out on my nose i want to have something here me too fat every negative thing would come through my mind mm -hmm. and and it was it was purely negative and i would be self-conscious and i would be unsure and so if i got attention and not if when i got attention especially from men it was a thing that fed me Okay. And if you know anything about um, energy and when you put out energy, right. you attract a certain yes. kind of energy. And if you go into the world being self-conscious, having low self-esteem, you are going to attract energy that wants to feed, feed off, off of, of that. that. And that's exactly what happened. So you find yourself um, in relationships, um, in entanglements that don't serve you at all and are not what you need in order to be the best version of yourself. All right. Were you, did you go through the period where you thought that the person who gave you attention, and, and by this I mean in your dating life, that they gave it to you out of pity? You know, there was also that. Um, very early I thought, oh my, you know, this person must be, you know, really, really great because, you know, they're looking at me and, you know, yes, it does make you feel good, but because you don't think you are worthy of the attention, hmm. you do think that um, it's almost like I'm sorry for you right. kind of thing. Not understanding that you are the prize. That, that, that it flip actually. Yeah. Yes. That them feel good <laughs> because they have you. I'm telling you, girl. Wow. But how did you actually get into being so confident? It has been a very long road. It has been a rocky road, <laughs> as I share in the book. Um, I started to, for me, it started out with faith. So I became a Christian um, 20, how much years ago? Maybe 23, 24 years okay. ago. And at that point, I um, was really going through a rocky period. And I focused on what God has said about me. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. You are made in my image and my likeness. And if you are made in the image and likeness of God, it means that you are awesome. Right. And slowly but surely, through the renewing of my mind, I started to accept in small ways. Yes, you're still struggling in, in because you would have had to unlearn a lot of what right. you learned as a young person. Quite a lot of unpacking. I'm telling you. But slowly but surely, I begin to see that, hmm, it's kind of nice to true, you know, you're really awesome, you know. And then, even though you might be in situations where you're still getting some negativity and you're still settling for some foolishness here and there, there is something in your belly bottom that says, no, yeah. there is better for you. This is not the kind of life you should have. This is not who you are. You are more than what you are currently in. And so we talk about you being a, well, I call you a communication hero, you know, and at, it, being on TV, you have your own show and you are always doing things on TV. And as you mentioned in the past, some people couldn't get some types of jobs and being on TV was one of those things. How did you actually break into that? Well, I'm going to be very honest with you. It was just um, divine, if you ask me. I went to Carimac at the University Big of the West Indies. Carimac, yay. And <laughs> I signed up for a radio specialty. Me too, I'd, you know. Yeah, I'd yeah. always been fascinated with radio and somehow ended up 
with TV. I ended up with PR. And when I saw the thing, I'm like, what? This is a mistake. And then I go to the, the secretary. And, and I say, query, though. you can't Same. change it now because the numbers are set yep. and blah, blah, blah. And I yep. say, oh my gospel, I'm going to. Anyway, I can be behind the scenes because, of course, at that time, I You definitely... weren't thinking of being on camera. Come on. Girl. Look at you no, now no. having a TV show. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> And then I went for an internship as part of, of, of that degree program to TVJ. Right. And the late Michael Sharp said to me, you know, you're wasting that voice that you have. And I think you would be an excellent presenter. And I'm like, brother, please. <laughs> and I'm there busy doing my produ- producer work behind the scenes and the writing and the editing and all of that, which I loved. And then he said to me one Friday, he said, Oh, Monday, bring something to wear because you're going to do the midday news. And I'm like, leave me alone now, please, sir. Please to leave me alone. All right, with my producing. I'm saying. And he said, well, I'm going to pull rank. He was the news editor at the time. And he said, you need to make sure that on Monday you come to do the midday news. Okay. Pull on my belly, but I'm nearly drop out. Yes, boss. Me stress out, me stress the whole (laughs) weekend. Me me couldn't even sleep good. What? Monday morning. I came, they did my face. I read over the newscast about five times and I said, Dear God of mercy. You know and me. <laughs> my belly do some piece of gymnastics there. And I sat on that set. We were still at South Odin Avenue and I did the midday news. And when I was done, I did not die. I survived. Clearly. It. <laughs> and the feedback was tremendous. Nice. And I was so nervous the whole time and I was self conscious the whole time. But I I did it. And I, as I grew um, in terms of my, my presentation skills, I mean, the feedback for my presentation has always been very positive. Yes, you know, I, I would learn and grow as I went through, but it's something that I think is a natural gift. Yes, I think so too, for you. And I, I thank you so much. And it's something that I recognize that I was fearful of because yeah. of the baggage that I was carrying. Um, and not actually because of all the talents that you have. And God said, look here, look a girl, come. I eat. God bless yeah. Michael Sharp. I'm telling you. Because we need people like that mm-hmm. to see something in someone and promulgate it. Yeah. Even, even if you're saying that you don't want to. He was always very good at that. Always gave young people a chance. And, and you know, his, his signature tagline, kill them with excellence, you know. He always said that and, and really um, supported growth of the young people in the newsroom. And I'll, I'll always be grateful for that. How did it go from there? So you know you're on TV from time to time and you're realizing that you're great at it and you're growing. Did it help at all with the other aspects of your life, reconfidence? So it, it did because, as you know, affirmation does that for you. You know, as people say, you know, you're very good at that. And I transitioned um, to, to other formats. So I did a stint in radio. Um, I wrote for The Gleaner at one point. Mm-hmm. Then I landed a, a role at, as a TV manager at the GIS mm-hmm. and um, did news presentation there as well. And also got some training with a great Faye Ellington. Yes. And, um, and TV. Yes. <laughs> and, and worked with her on, on national events, state events, national honors and awards. Yeah, protocol. Yes, and learning protocol and, and doing live commentary for state funerals, that kind of thing. And so I, I learned um, how to develop those skills in oratory as well. Mm-hmm. And that has been tremendous for me. And it, as I said, the more you grow and the more you humble yourself to learn, you know, it's, it's the more you see um, things expanding. And, and I began to acknowledge that, hey, wait, I have a knack for this kind of thing, you know, and, and continuing to work and to press on that at the same time, um, making a transition after a while into public relations right? And, and going into corporate and, you know, strengthening those skills as well. When you're a PR in a company, everybody expects the PR to be confident and bold and telling everybody what to do, make everybody feel nice and easy, training them sometimes. Mm-hmm. Was it like that for you or was it a fake it till they make it? Me not really sure. Well, I'm moving along with the tide. By the time I, I got into corporate, I think I pretty much had shed a lot of those negative things about myself. Now, if the close spin was off. Close spin came off. I, I was certainly, you know, more mature in terms of my thinking and my perception. And, and for me, growing up meant growing out of that kind of mindset and being able to 
be that kind of light and that kind of energy that you need in the corporate space. Well, I feel we need to cheers to that. <laughs> yes. Mm. So now we're in corporate and you're doing all the things you want to do. I know that as part of your bio, saying that you're a mother of two is important to you. Mm -hmm. Tell me why is it so important to you on this confidence journey? I, I tell you something. My children, um, and, and I know somebody who disagrees with this, but they remain my two greatest achievements, okay. primarily because as a mother, you are given this responsibility to hone human beings that are going to be progressive and to continue to contribute positively in society. That's my role. For right, me, that's the biggest that job. Good, good. Can you know, say <laughs> me just have one. So, me not really did say him my greatest achievement so far. I don't know if I'm going to grow a little more first. So, me I going to listen to that part. Yeah. Teach me. Well, when my children are older, my son is just turned 20. He's 20 mm -hmm. now. My daughter is 17, um, mm -hmm. 18 in a few months. And so I've already begun to see characteristics that I am extremely proud of. You know, I see them becoming well-thinking, um, persons of integrity, people who will contribute amazing things to this world, not just Jamaica. Okay. And it makes me feel very proud that even in my state of brokenness at one point, I still could find enough to deposit into them that would help them to become the people that they are growing into now. And this brokenness was when you were a parent? So, yes, even when I just became a parent, because I, I I had my son when I was 24, you know, and my daughter was born when I was 27 years old. So I was still in my 20s, um, still at one point struggling to find myself and to shake off that kind of mindset that we, we referenced earlier. And it, it wasn't always easy. But it was something that I recognized I had to get a handle on because if you're going to deposit into other people to get them to know and to love and to understand themselves, then you have to go through that mm. process first That's and true. foremost. So now we, you've accomplished things that you never thought you would. You have all these accolades. You have this wonderful book. Where, do you, where, do you, where are you on your confidence scale right now? So if I were to say um, on a scale of one to five. Ten. One to ten? Yes. I would say ten. Okay. I would say ten. I like because it. Tell me why. I, I truly believe that I can do all things. I can do all things. Everything that I set my mind to. Um, everything that I decide that I want to achieve, there is nothing that's going to stop me from doing it except me. Except if I decide, mm, I'm going to pass on that one. Right. That would be the only thing that would stop me from doing what I want to do. And with that, 10, we're going to see just how you rank in the pose-off. Because <laughs> now we're going to have the confidence pose-off. And as you know, it's by your friends there at Sleek. So it's a Sleek confidence pose-off. Make we see if you get 10 in at that. See if you can pose better than me. Good things don't come easy. So let me see show out if you need me. Okay, when we were talking before, you you mentioned affirming and how well that works to get us through this whole journey of life generally. And so, I'm pleased to announce that here on Bean Broad Tail, we have our own affirmation cards. Mm -hmm. Yes, and so I'm going to ask you to choose one. Let's see which one you choose. Shuffle right, it up right, and choose right. one and see what which one you come up with right. and what's your affirmation, okay? Okay, dokie. All right. <laughs> oh, this, this one? one. This, oh, this that one? one? That one. This out. one? Okay. Okay, so I love this one for you, based on what we were talking about. Let me hear it. Let me hear it. It says, the size of my body does not dictate my worth. My worth is solely dependent on the value I assign to it. Oh, praise the name of Jesus. Amen. I love it. Let the church, all of the church say. Amen. All right. And you know, you could not come to being broad today without getting gifts. And don't worry, everything that my guests get. My viewers and listeners can also get it if oh. they watch each week. And so your I first like gift, of course, I, I, love love it, I love it. The first one is from one of my favorite brands, 
Morgan's Creek. Mm. Because you know, so when we skin look nice and supple, we feel confident. And so mood. And so mood. <laughs> and so you have your gift certificate from Morgan's Creek. You can go into the store and get whatever you want. Oh. And with that, we get into our moment with Morgan's Creek. This week, we're featuring our face and body scrub. Yes, sir. Uh, our coffee scrub. And we only use Jamaican Blue Mountain coffee. So you're getting that smell and getting the richness. So it tightens and brightens the skin and gives you an amazing glow. I can tell you about this glow. Now, this is also one of my favorite products. The coffee sugar scrub. It makes your face feel like baby bottom. Maybe it's in at the butt naked line to join in. <laughs> I really, really love it. And as you said, have that nice, rich smell of the Blue Mountain coffee. Yes, and yes. so it's just all the yumminess for your skin to keep your face nice and tight. So this week from Morgan's Creek, it's coffee sugar scrub. And you can get it in their store. Where, Joni? At Shop 36 Sovereign Center or on our website. Yeah. I think you've got a message on your phone. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Wait. It did vibrate a little bit. Yeah, man. Mm -hmm. Because our friends from Blink Sky, Blink Sky Ooh, Jamaica. My. Yes. Wait, let me click on it. Let me click and see. Yes, they oh. sent you a gift. Now, Blink Sky is an online gifting platform and they can send you gifts via a gift certificate. Yes, I see it right there. So you are going to be going to Uncork mm -hmm. to have a great time. I love it. So we want to thank our friends at Blinkscan. And if you don't want to use all of the money one time, mm -hmm. you can drink some wine now. Oh. And then they update it. Real-time balance. It's very safe. And when you get into store, they just scan it and it's paid for. Isn't that something? Yeah, Blinkscan and Broadtail. I like it. Yes. I like it a lot. I love it too. And of course, you could not leave without getting a gift from is that Broad Tail. What I think it is. Yes, it is what yeah. it is. Now, let me tell you something. <laughs> this lady, Cherie Smith, from when she forget her Broad Tail piece. Oh my and gosh, I have what? not been able to give it mm -hmm. to her. A true. The fabric always, I have it. This I happened, that I happened. <laughs> now I'm at the time. And I'm so sorry for all of that, but we've made up. And so I hope you love oh, being broad tail. Oh my darling, with your I know I new shall love it. Cover. Oh my god, I love the color of red. I love it. I love it. I love that's what and we I love. I shall be sure to take the picture Listen. and uh, send it to you. Yes, so we can mm. post it on Instagram. Let oh, everybody see how course. fabulously regal Thank you are. Thank you, my sweetheart. You know, so because we want the wealth to continue, mm -hmm. the goodness to continue, because we deserve the good things. Then. Oh yes, this indeed. is my ZZ plant. You see it, girl? Mm -hmm. Since season one, it grew. And so I want you to touch my ZZ plant because this is our plant of wealth. It gives us more <laughs> and we want more and to splinter it to everywhere else. So there goes your blessing from being brought here. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Stacey, <laughs> for coming and sharing your story with us, being so authentic. And we love your journey and we love what you've, you've become. And where's the next book? You know, I am about maybe 90% complete. It's a book of fiction. I'm writing a collection of short stories. Nice. I love them. I've actually entered one for um, a short story prize, a Commonwealth short story prize. Yes. Fingers crossed that I win. You know what I love about you being an author is that you never mentioned it in the beginning of the things that you wanted to do or were or you were good at. And so now you used to love books. I know you're carrying others on a journey mm -hmm. through books. And I really love that for you. Oh, thank you so much. And guess what? Mm. I brought you something. No, I love gifts. Ta-da! <laughs> yes! Your very own copy of Time Does Not Heal. Guys, this and is the I first time anybody gives me a gift on being brought to you. Achoo. Yes, thank you so much. Well, I love that. Yes, it's going to be a part of my read. Thank you, Stacey. You, 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 you look fabulous, funny tea. Girl, my beard and come out strong. Yeah, you yeah. look like you smell good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I like that. Beard up nice. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome, love. <laughs> and thank you to my viewers for tuning in every single week to Being Brought Tail. But you have to tune in next week to see which fabulous woman I'm going to be interviewing so that she can take us on her own journey of confidence and tell us how it is in her world being brought to Sometimes the things that tear us apart are the ones that unite us and bring us closer together. Sometimes the darkest of night turns into a day so bright, bright. leaving us 
scars and the pain, everything that we fear behind us. Whether it's life, let's keep on dreaming. Whether it's love, let's find you meaning. Whether it's hope, keep on believing. Keep holding on. Hold on. So never give up through wind and storm. Cause after the rain, Message from Sajiko.